All right. We get an 1812. Welcome to day 251 on my journey to 2000 ELO on chess.com. Let me get E4. I'm going to play C6. We're going to a Karl Khan. And D5 here. So we get an exchange. Good, good. All right, we get the accelerated pan off, which I'll admit I haven't played in a while. I'm going to go knight f6 to, to bolster this pawn here. A lot of times we get knight c3 here. And I think the principled approach is to just play e6 and lock your bishop in. I mean, the pawn is defended twice, so I didn't have to do that. And now I have to decide how I want to take care of this pawn. All right, I'm going to go knight c6. A lot of times they take here. So pushing. I don't know it I don't know that it's any better to push past here. It does make things like b6 an idea. I can simply get my bishop out. I could also play g6 and get the bishop out this way, which looks better, just on the in the sense that you're I'll be attacking that pawn. And I think I will do that. Now opponent does have so maybe I go a6 first. I wonder about a6 first because Opponent does have the ability to pin right here and then jump the knight in. And then I would have to play something like bishop d7. So let's say g6, bishop b5, and I play a6 then. Then he goes bishop a4. I could play b5. B takes on passant. Then queen b6 protects the knight. And with his bishop on a4, he doesn't have knight a4. If I go a6 now, his bishop can't come to b5. I like a6, I think. I just don't want to have to extend that far on the queen side so early. And a logical square for his bishop is d3. And if I'm going to play g6 anyway, then I'm kind of blunting his bishop with natural play. Only reason I don't like a move like a6 is it just wastes a tempo, and getting castled in the Karl Khan sometimes can be a tricky, delicate balance of making sure that you're developing, but also making sure that you're getting your king safe and preventing your opponent's ideas, because some of these lines can be tricky that they can you can fall into some traps. But sometimes I overthink it, you know? Sometimes in the opening, I'm overthinking all of the ideas and I'm giving my opponent too much credit and things, you know, are much easier often than what I see. So we're sitting at 1790. So with a win, we'll be at 1798 if I do manage to win. And that would be pretty cool. Almost back above 1800 or back to 1800, I should say. The opponent can go for the same type of idea with queen a4, but in that case... I think I think on queen a4 I play bishop d7 because that discovery is a lot more deadly. Interesting. He wants to put the knight on b6. I don't like the knight there. I don't like this. But I have queen a5 check. This gets the bishop out though. I can't take the knight. I have knight d7 which feels kind of bad to have to play, but it might be the best plan here. Knight d7, I think, is what I'm going to do. I can't, I can't let the knight to be, get to b6. Kind of a ridiculous move here, but hey, whatever. Opponent's knight is on the rim, so it's not going to do much there. And once I can play g6 and get the bishop out, there's going to be a lot of pressure on d4. I still have b6 ideas. The only thing I don't like about g6 actually is that if this bishop comes here, then I have to put my bishop here, I guess, and then takes takes. I don't have to put my bishop there. I could go back with the knight. Because bishop e7, I can still put the bishop here to attack this pawn. g6, bishop out. g6, bishop here. That really does suck. So g6, bishop here. g6, bishop out here takes takes or takes and then takes with the knight to get the knight here i want to go g6 i just don't think it's a good idea 
I'm going to leave the bishop on this diagonal. I don't think g6 is a good idea. I, don't, I really don't want to have to trade this bishop. It's the good bishop in the Karl Khan most of the time. So I can put my bishop here and attack this pawn right away. So on, so this I'm not really afraid of, right? He does get the bishop out. So castles, b5. A takes b5, bishop takes b5. I can still move this knight. Let's say I go bishop f6. Not really threatening anything. If I go bishop f6 right now, he could just move the bishop here. I'm just going to castle. I think my opponent is a little too overextended on the queen side. And as long as I can mop these pawns up, I should be good to go. I could have played b5 there, I guess. I force a lot of trades. Get my knight up to the c4. I think I might consider doing that if opponent doesn't play b5. I think he's going to play b5, though. No, okay. So if I play b5 myself and he takes, we take. I can get the knight up here. Also like this, because now this, no. b5 does give him a passed pawn though. So let's say he doesn't take, he just moves his knight, like moves his knight, he loses this pawn. But this pawn is going to be dangerous if I leave it there. Like maybe I just play b6 myself. And then he can go b5, takes, takes. And I lost the defender here, so then I gotta move this guy. Then I can move him back to a7, attacking the bishop. And then he has this move. So b5 is risky because he can... I guess he does get a pass pawn, but then what happens if I just start attacking this pawn? Let's just attack this pawn and force him to react to that first. I could also consider breaking with e5. That might be the way to go here. So let's say he does this. e5, e, or d takes, knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes. We're good. e5, he doesn't do anything. I push e4. I like e5 because then it softens up the pawns on this side of the board too. It does allow his knight to b6 though if all of those trades happen. So maybe I play rook e8 first, but then it, it might be too late. He castled his king, he can play rook e1. Or I guess, so bishop, let's say bishop c3, rook e8, castles, e5. I'm threatening to push. I think e5 is the play here. Ooh, I also have ideas of taking on c5. In some positions, and he can't take the knight back unless he wants to. Well, I guess that would only work if the rook was undefended. Otherwise, it's just two pieces for a pawn and a rook. Not good. It's good to always scan for tactics, though, like possible tactics. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, seriously? You're just going to leave the pawn and your king in the middle of the board. Honestly, he didn't defend this pawn. I'm looking at e5 again. I think he's thinking about a... He's thinking about a Greek gift is what's going on. That's what's going through his mind. He wants... I think that's what's going on. Because takes... King takes. Knight in. I take. Bishop doesn't... Bishop takes doesn't work. But now that his bishop is protected, or like knight in, and then I take, he takes, opens up the h file, and then he gets his queen over here, and that's what he's looking at. I can almost guarantee it. But what happens if I go g6? Just think through some options here. g6. Honestly, I could just go king h8. I mean, what's the big deal? But the question is, do I take the pawn on d4, or do I go e5? e5 is more, I think, principled, like you're opening up the center of the board, and taking the pawn on d4 keeps it closed. Although taking the pawn on d4 means my knight has access to f5, so I could go, you know, takes, takes, then f5. I'm going to go with the principled approach, though. Now if I push, takes, takes. 
I'm going e5. I know it's a free pawn, but I, I think my opponent's going to try to greet gift. I'm going to go king h8. I did give him the, the f5 square to keep his bishop at, though. That probably wasn't the best idea. I mean, it's now or never now. Yeah, he's got the great gift in mind. I don't, I'm not taking the bishop. That's all right, have the pawn. So the plan now is to open the center of the board, get my rook to the e-file. I think I take with this knight because I, I still want to kind of protect b6 in a way. Or maybe, maybe I don't, so I can get my bishop out. Now I take this way. I mean, as soon as I take his knight, or he trades knights, I can take the bishop now. I take the bishop. Where does he go with his knight? He's got a... His knight is pinned. Oh, I can, actually, I take the knight, and then... What does he want? I'm trying to figure out what he wants. He wants his queen right here, is what he wants. So if I take the knight, queen here attacks the bishop, bishop is protected, but then I go g6, he can take with check. So he wants his queen right here. If I play, if I take here, and he puts his queen here, I play knight f6. Yeah, I think I'm good, because the, the discovery doesn't work, because the, the piece that's giving the check is the queen, which is under attack. And I think he loses a a knight here, or or he's gonna lose his rook, or the the bishop. He's got to move his bishop, I think. And then the queen check doesn't really hmm, interesting. So now I get it, because then he wants to take the knight, right? So if I go bishop back, queen comes in, right? If I go knight out. Queen can't come in. He can take the knight. Then I take with my queen, and I think that's still good. Yeah. So now if the queen comes in, I just take the queen. Queen can't come in. I take here, take here. Queen comes in. I, I play queen. H6. Rook is still hanging. Mind you. Opponent is pretty creative with this attack. I think it, he's forcing me to find some only moves. I think objectively, like an engine could for sure hold this. Like, uh, maybe I'm just being optimistic. Okay, now I can just take the take the bishop and then take the other take the rook. But is there a reason that I should be worried about anything else? Maybe I just move my rook over here. If I move the rook here and he takes my rook, for example, I have this check. The king only has this move. And then I, I bring the rook down and check and win the queen for two pieces though. And he's got my rook. I think I take. I could take the. I should. I could take the bishop. That's the tricky line. I think taking the bishop. The queen has spaces to come in. I have to make a decision though. I'm gonna take the bishop. Maybe this isn't right. This rook is is kind of out of the game anyway. I mean, I could save it, but I'm worried about tempo he could gain. You know, taking the pawn, taking the knight. This bishop was a thorn in my side. Oh, I think rook e8 makes a lot of sense. He could castle. So if I, I was thinking at first bishop here, or if I take here, he has the queen and two attackers here. Then I can check. I can give a check. I'm going to attack the knight. I don't know if I can technically take this knight. Opponent's up in exchange, but this rook is hanging, the knight is hanging. A lot of things hanging. But my idea is that now I can take this knight or this rook. Let's say he he ex he gets the knight out, right? I take the rook. He takes with the queen. I check, and then I have this check. Is that good enough though? Rook is kind of out of the game. We both have two and a half minutes, and this is way too tactical. That's going to be my goal: is to stay up on the clock for right now. I think moving my bishop here to cut the king off is too slow. I think I win the exchange back, get the rook out. Maybe I should have put the queen here. I don't know. And maybe check here. He probably, I don't know if he's thinking about bringing his queen up. That makes a lot of sense too. But if I can get my, yeah, okay. So let's do this. Just getting the bishop out of harm's way with a check. 
And then I can threaten checkmate. Oh, that actually doesn't threaten checkmate. Let's not be hasty. It does threaten to trade basically all of the pieces, though. This does win a pawn for him, though. So if I go here and he takes here, for example, and I take with the queen, he takes, I take, knight grabs the pawn. So I don't like that. Maybe I bring the rook up and try to get a check with the rook on the back rank. Force a queen trade. I also need to get my king, like, basically back to the back rank. Okay, I don't have a, a million years here. I don't like a couple things, and one is, so I want to get my queen right here, I think, but I don't like um, my king being here, I don't like losing this pawn, got a great knight, could always sack the exchange if I really feel inclined to, but I don't at the moment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, is this, these stupid checks. There's an argument to be made to play... We're playing, um, now I could put my rook here for, for queen e8 is what I'm, I was going to say, because even though I lose this pawn, like takes, I guess I don't lose it. Oh no, takes, takes. I would look, I would lose the pawn or argument for queen e7 is what I'm saying. So I can, cause if the king comes out and I'm on the dark squares, but let's go queen e8. Let's threaten to win his queen. Okay. What about d4, though? That loses the bishop. This actually... Oh. Uh, loses the bishop right here. Low time pressure. Gets, gets you every time. He could actually have moved right there, I guess. Yeah. Gotta play a little quicker. I need to get my knight here, I think. I guess he doesn't lose the bishop. What about here, though? No, that... Maybe I had that last move though. I think I have this though. Do I not? I have many ideas here. Here and here is checkmate. Well, if the queen wasn't there. But here, then queen up. I don't like that move. Maybe f5. What the heck? I'm sacking the exchange. I don't know why, but this is what I want to do. And I don't even know if it's good. I don't know if this is good at all. I just feel like I, I maybe I shouldn't have done the, the rook sack. Maybe I should have just came up with the queen in the first place. But I want the queen off the back rank so I can go here. And this is checkmate. This should be game. And I could like feel that one. Like, I just mean like, I don't know why. I just thought that that's what I should do. And we'll see if the engine agrees, but holy moly, that was cool. That was such a fun game. That was such a fun game. Oh my gosh. Not just because I won. Like, even if I lost, if I, if I did that rook sack and I lost the game, whatever. I gave it my all. We both played. My, my opponent, like, came out guns blazing. And just, I had to find move after move after move. And then I eventually turned the tables and I started attacking him. And the accuracy is not very high. My opponent apparently blundered twice. I had zero blunders, but we both had a couple brilliant... He had two brilliant moves, and I had one. All right, let's take a look. So you get the exchange, accelerated pan off. And I'm just going to look at the most common moves so I can refresh my memory here. And F6, I see 3 E6, yep. C5 is the second most common move, and then Bishop E7 is best. Bishop E7, probably just to get castled quickly, I would imagine. Yeah, just get castled so you can play B6. No need to, to pin your knight or anything like that. And let's say you go Bishop E7, and they, they come out with the Bishop check. Probably, yeah, Bishop D7. And they can't really push c6 because you take. And you're setting up for rook c8 and then b6. Okay. So now I know. Okay, they bring the knight out, e6, they push. I want to play bishop e7 and get castled. Okay. Let's go to the game though. Knight c6 is not a bad move, it's just not the most popular move. At f3. 
Bishop e7. I played a6. Hmm. White wins 80% of the games with a6. Oh wow, queen b3. Queen b3 would have been so good. I might have had to play rook b8 there and then tried for a... No, that's just too slow. Queen b3. I might have had to check here. That doesn't do anything though. What do I do on queen b3? Bishop b7. Just like give up your pawn. Oh man. What about here though? Isn't that the point of playing queen b3? No, it's not. Anyway, all right, let's go to the game here. So bishop e7, g6 is up here. So I wondered on g6 in bishop out. Oh, I just do the check. And then get the queen to a safer square. Okay. That's useful. So my instinct with g6 was good. Bishop f6 is best. So bishop takes d4. I was looking at knight takes d4 actually, but bishop takes d4. What are these new, uh, it must have been the Chrome update that gives you these, you guys see that, uh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't take it, I don't think. I don't think I could take it and survive. I just go back. And then it's, the, the queen is coming in, like, how do I even survive this? I have to move my rook probably, yeah. Okay, maybe it's not as bad as it seems. But then oh, I guess he has this check. That's the That's the issue. And what does he do now? I don't know. I don't know how he he finishes this off. So I guess I I guess I could have taken the bishop, but I wasn't gonna risk that. Okay, so that's a blunder. Uh, I should have taken the other with the other knight, and then with that knight. Yeah, because I guess this makes sense. I don't know why. I think I just wanted pressure on the rook, but I mean he's coming here to put pressure on my queen. And I think knight f6 is basically the only move, yeah, it is, that keeps me in the game here. And yeah, this, it's a little bit greedy, I feel like. Yeah, so, so it says brilliant. My king taking the bishop is brilliant. I don't know if I, the follow-up was good, though. Yeah, just take right away. <laughs> brilliant, saving your knight, brilliant. This is a little much. And then these were good. And then, okay, so just amidst all of this, the engine is like, bro, push your pawn. He can't, you know, he's going to have to do this or something with this to get his rook out. I can safely push twice. So he said, so it says A4. I don't, I don't, A4, not A5, A3. A4 to get my bishop out of there. Bishop c6. 
Queen B1. Check. King. Oh, Bishop E4, actually. Okay. Queen D1. Not E1. D1. And then I'm sure D3. H5. Bishop F5. Why is that important here though? Can I go D2? No, he's got, oh, okay, Bishop F5 to get the Rook up here. Yeah, to get the Rook there, right? Cause like, let's say he just plays move like this. Queen D4. Okay, let's say, let's say he doesn't play that move. Uh, I don't know, this move. Still queen d4 or d2. I was looking at rook e2. Let's say he did something like this. I was looking at this. If he takes, promote. And uh, this is checkmate, but because I moved the rook, but I moved his rook. But I'm I'm just seeing how strong pushing this D pawn is, because it's not something that came naturally to me. Like putting this pawn, like just amidst all, like I only have a minute or two minutes left, so it's not like I can fault myself that much. But pushing this pawn with amid like all of this chaos and potential, you know, pushes here and trying to you know do this and this, it just doesn't come naturally to me. So wanted to see what I missed. And now, queen e8 is the great move. d4. Oh, wow. Rook takes e3. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. I did not see that mate. How is that not a blunder, though? If it leads to forced bait, or you lose a piece, how is that not a blunder? Like, how is this not a blunder? I could just force a queen trade too. And then he's threatening this, so he's got to go back. And then I can just... Yeah, just be up a piece. Okay, so I did not see that. I should have considered it. I just didn't, I only had a minute on the clock. I th For some reason, my... <laughs> I thought this bishop was doomed because of this. I didn't see this move. But I was, after the fact, I thought maybe this was the best move. Knight e4 is the best move. Uh, just probably knight g3, yeah. Because if you take, I, I win your queen. If you don't take, I win your rook. Yeah. I didn't see knight e4 either. I saw it after the fact. And then... Oh, man. Okay, so knight takes f2. This was... That's the losing move. So I looked at this move here and I saw that this was a fork and I decided not to do that. But now it's the same thing. Actually, he takes, I take here and that's checkmate. And if he doesn't take one of these pieces, I'm taking his queen. He takes here, it's still checkmate. So my instinct was to go queen e4 here, but I was afraid of this move. But I, I thought there might be a way out of it. I just didn't see it. I should have just played queen e4. Knight takes f2, though. Let's look at that. Best move is queen takes e2. 
Uh, I mean, he's not going to do that, so. Say here. Bishop c6. I mean, I'm not going to find all this. Not with a minute. Queen f1. So the queen is just moving all around the board here. Yeah, I mean, I, I see why this is good. I just, there's no way I'm finding all of that. If that's the, I mean, I can, I can see that I can win a pawn. Okay, I should have seen that. But seeing that all of this, like, might have even assumed that this was bad. Then here, and he can't take, he's attacked. Yeah. All right, well, this one is a very tactical one. I'll have to look at it a little bit more. But pushing d4, that's crazy. Crazy good. But yeah, all right, well, thank you for watching. I'll see you back tomorrow.